Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you about the commonly used temperature sensors. I invited you to watch the whole video series I prepared on sensors and their microcontroller interfacing. You can find the playlist link in the description below. We will follow a project-based approach and complete particular part of the project in each video. Here is the introductory part on the commonly used four types of temperature sensors. At the end of this video, I will also inform you what the project we are completing throughout the course of our journey. If you like the video and find it useful, please give me your like so that YouTube can help me recommending it to others. Subscribe and set the notification bell to all for more of our future videos. Okay, let's see first what a sensor is. The environment we are living in has many variables. To mention a few of them, it might be temperature, pressure, flow rate, fluid level, pH, speed, position, and many more. In industrial process, we often need to know the status of one or several of those environmental variables, or we may need to keep those variables at a desired value. We humans use our five sensory organs, such as our eye, our tongue, our ear, etc., and our brain then decides based on the information from those organs. In industrial process also, controllers decide based on the information from the sensors. Sensors are therefore the eyes and ears or the sense organs for an industrial control system. As a brief definition, sensor is a transducer that sends a physical variable and converts it into a corresponding electrical signal. Transducer here is a generic term that converts one energy state to another energy state. But a sensor converts a physical variable from any energy state to its electrical signal. Consider, for example, this tank. As you can see from this sketch, there is a liquid flowing into the tank and there is also a liquid flowing out of the tank to the distribution system. And there is also a steam flowing into the tank for heating purpose. The associated environmental variables for this particular example could be the flow rate of the liquid flowing into the tank F1 and its temperature T1, and the flow rate of the liquid flowing out of the tank F2 and its temperature T2, and the steam flow rate FST and the temperature TST. You see, there are several variables. So you may want to know or control one of those variables or some of them. You need sensor, right? Sensors can capture the environmental variable of your wish, but the selection and the design of a sensor for your application depends upon you, the designer. Temperature is a very important variable in any industry. We want, for example, to monitor or control the temperature of a particular process in any industry. Even for example, in your home, you want to keep the temperature of your room at a desired value. Hence, temperature sensors are frequently used sorts of sensors. Consider our previous tank system. If I want to know the temperature of the liquid inside the tank, I should fix my temperature sensor at a desired place on the tank. Then the information from the tank should be transported into my microcontroller with a correct wiring system. Then I should program my microcontroller in a way to send the signal or the sensor information into my display system. Or if I want to control or keep the temperature of the liquid inside the tank, I can program my microcontroller so that I can open or close the valve of the steam to heat or cool the liquid. Sensors are just devices. If they are designed correctly, they can provide an information correctly. At they say garbage in, garbage out. Those are the most commonly used temperature sensors, RTDs, thermocouples, thermistors, and semiconductor type temperature sensors. There are plenty of applications. 
for which you can also choose a suitable sensor from those bunch of sensors. RTDs or resistance temperature detectors as the name indicates provide resistance as a function of temperature. Most of them are made from platinum while some of them are made from nickel, nickel iron alloy or even copper. They are used where accurate temperature measurement is needed. They can provide stable temperature measurement for longer period of time. They are expensive. RTDs are positive temperature coefficient sensors, meaning that as the temperature increases, the resistance also increases. But they are limited for smaller range of temperature measurements. Mostly, RTDs are applicable in industrial instrumentation. They are used as hot wire anemometers and they are used to generate laboratory quality measurements. Thermocouples gives millivolt range of EMF as a function of temperature. They are constructed from two dissimilar metals of platinum or platinum rhodium. With thermocouples, the highest range of temperature measurement can be achieved. They have fast response time and they can be applied in a harsh environment. Their disadvantage is though they have small output signal and they require extra circuitry for reference junction compensation. Based on sensor technology, there are several thermocouple types. E-type thermocouple, J-type thermocouple to B-type thermocouples where E-type thermocouples are the most sensitive types of thermocouples, while the B-type thermocouples are the least sensitive thermocouple types. Thermocouples are applied for several applications, like in temperature furnace, ovens, rocket engines, gas appliance safety monitoring, chemical production, petroleum refineries, food processing, and iron and steel manufacturing plants. Thermistors as RTDs, they also provide resistance as a function of temperature, but in a higher nonlinear fashion, typically in an exponential form. They are metal oxide ceramic semiconductor type temperature sensors characterized by with their high sensitivity, lower cost, and reasonable accuracy. They have good electrical noise immunity. Most of the thermistors are negative temperature coefficient, meaning that the resistance decreases as the temperature increases or, or the resistance increases as the temperature decreases. But there are also positive temperature coefficient thermistors. They are mostly applied in medical devices, home thermostats or home AC systems, air conditioning systems, in temperature monitoring in power supplies, battery chargers and over temperature shutdown systems. The last type of temperature sensor, semiconductor type temperature sensors, the most commonly used type of sensor in electronic systems is characterized by their high sensitivity, accuracy, based linearity and their smaller size. They can be easily interfaced to any analog or digital circuit. They are mostly applied in automotive applications like electrical and power train systems, industrial control, building automation, grid automation, in healthcare systems, PCBs and chips. As a summary, selecting a temperature sensor depends on your application and several factors. For example, if your application needs a wider temperature range, thermocouples will be your primary choice. If you rather seriously concern on accuracy, RTDs will be your choice. Or if cost is your primary concern, you may choose the other. This table summarizes the mentioned four types of sensors and their characteristics. Okay, this was a brief introduction about the four commonly used temperature sensors. This is our project throughout the course of our journey. Assume that we are required to design an automatic air conditioner for an office in our campus, where the environmental temperature varies from minus five degrees centigrade to eight degrees centigrade. If you took or we took this task as a concerned individual, our task should begin by selecting an appropriate sensor and studying its behavior. So we performed this task in our next video. We will select particular or a typical sensor for our application 
and study its behavior from its data sheet. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe the channel. Feel free to leave your comment.